Hey guys, David here from TechOp.io, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Ubuntu Server. Okay, so this is actually going to be the first video in a series of videos about Ubuntu Server, where I'm going to be walking you through installing different applications on the server. So this is going to be a pretty generic install, which is appropriate for pretty much any application afterwards. If you'd like to see the upcoming videos in this series, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so let's get right into it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the Ubuntu ISO installer image. You can do this by going to ubuntu.com slash download slash server. And you're going to want to find the LTS version of Ubuntu. In my case, the current version is 24.04.2. And you're going to want to click download LTS over here. If you scroll down a little bit, you may see a newer development version of Ubuntu server. However, for serious use cases, I always recommend sticking with the LTS version to make sure that you always have the longest support cycle for your system. So I'm going to go ahead and click download LTS over here. And it is a few gigabytes and it may take a few minutes to download, so just be patient. Once it's done downloading, you can either use it with your virtual machine, or if you're installing this on a physical machine, you can write the ISO to a USB. If you're on a Linux system already like I am here, you can write the ISO to a USB using some built-in tools. I'll leave a link to my video on that in the description below. Okay, so once you've got your ISO downloaded and optionally written to your USB stick, you're going to want to boot into the ISO on your computer. This is normally done by hitting Escape or F12 as the computer is first turned on to access the boot menu and using the arrow keys to select your USB drive to boot from. Once you've booted to the Ubuntu ISO, you should see a menu similar to this here. Depending on your computer, it might look slightly different, but the options should be the same. With the first option selected, try or install Ubuntu server, you're going to want to hit enter. And you're just going to want to wait a few seconds for the system to load. This may take anywhere from 30 seconds to a few minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. Okay, so once the installer is loaded, you'll see that we're at this menu here where I can select my language using the arrow keys. I'm just going to leave it on English and I'll hit enter. And optionally, you can change the keyboard layout here. I am using a US keyboard, so I'm just going to leave it. Or if you're not sure what kind of keyboard you're using, you can use this identify keyboard wizard, but I'm sure that I'm on a US keyboard, so I'm just going to hit done, enter. And when you're asked to choose the base for the installation, you can leave this on the default Ubuntu server. You can use Ubuntu server minimized if you're an advanced user and you know what you're doing. However, for most users, Ubuntu server is going to be more appropriate since it comes with all the common tools already pre-installed. If you have certain proprietary hardware, such as an NVIDIA GPU, it may be helpful to select this box here, search for third-party drivers. However, this actually isn't needed in most cases, and if you're not sure, I'd just recommend leaving it disabled on the default. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Done, Enter. And on this screen, we're going to be asked to configure our network interface. So if we go up here to the network interface, you can see that I was assigned an IP address from our DHCP server of 10.0.2.15 on subnet slash 24. Now, leaving this on DHCP may allow the IP address of the server to change, which we don't want. A server should always have a static IP address, which means that it doesn't change. This is because if you have devices connecting to the server, you always want those devices to know where to find the server. If the IP address of the server starts changing, that makes it pretty difficult. So we're going to want to go ahead and assign a static IP address for this server. So what I'm going to do here is select my network interface, hit enter. I'll go down to edit IPv4, I'll hit enter. And I'll hit enter to open the list of options, and I'll go down to manual here, and I'll hit enter. And I'll go down to subnet, and we're going to need to fill in our network information. Now, if you're not familiar with networking, the easiest way to do this is just to use the IP address that was assigned to us from DHCP and assign it statically here so that it doesn't change. Most modern DHCP servers will be fine with this, but if you do run your own DHCP server, you may want to go and designate this IP address there as well. So what I'm going to do here is just reuse the subnet information from above. So in my case, we have a slash 24 subnet, and that's probably going to be most common. That basically means that our subnet is going to be the first part of the IP address that we were assigned, but the last octet or the last digit here, we're going to put a zero slash 24. The slash 24 basically means that the last part after the last dot is all that can change in this IP address. So the network I'm on can have IP addresses ranging from 10.0.2.1 to 10.0.2.254. I'm going to go down to address here, and I'm just going to type in the same address that we were assigned from the DHCP server. 
And now the gateway is going to be the IP address of your main router. Now, in most cases, again, this is going to be the beginning of your subnet here with the last octet or the last number just being one. Again, if you have a more advanced network configuration, this may not be the case, but this is a pretty safe assumption here. And finally, again, a safe assumption, but not always the case. Your name server is normally the IP address of your router again, so 10.0.2.1 in my case. Once I've assigned those, I'll go down using the arrow keys and hit enter on save. And it took a second, but now we have a static IP address on this server, which means that it won't change. So once I've done that, I'll use the arrows to go back down to done and I'll hit enter. And you can enter a proxy address here if you want. Again, this is for advanced users. If you're not sure, you can just leave it blank and hit enter. We're done. Now on this screen here, you may just want to wait a minute just to make sure that it can connect to the package repository for Ubuntu. If you get errors on this screen, it most likely means that there's some sort of problem with your static IP address configuration on the last screen. So you can go back and fix it. In my case here, it looks like everything's working okay. And so I'll just hit done. And for the storage layout, I'm just going to use the entire disk. If you're an advanced user, you can use a custom storage layout. But if you're not sure, just leave it on use an entire disk. And I'll go down and hit done, enter. And this is just a summary of the changes it's going to make on the hard drive. Again, if you're using a custom layout, this might be useful. But if you're just using the guided layout, just hit enter. And it's going to ask if you're sure you want to continue, because this is going to erase everything on the drive. Yes, we're sure. So I'll just go down and hit continue, enter. And now it's going to ask you to create an account as well as give the server a name. So I'm going to put in my name here, David. Server name, I'm just going to name it Ubuntu Server. You can name it whatever you want, but this is the name that other computers will know this server by. I'll go down to pick a username. I'll just choose David for now. And it's going to ask you to make a password. And once you've confirmed your password, just go down to done, hit enter. And if you have an Ubuntu Pro license, you can go ahead and select enable Ubuntu Pro up here. For most users, you're probably not going to have one of these, so you'll just leave it on skip for now and hit enter to continue. And if you want to be able to access this server remotely right off the bat, I would go ahead and put an X in this box here, install OpenSSH server, because if you don't, you're going to need physical access to the machine once the installation is done. If that's okay, you can leave this blank, but on a lot of servers, you're going to want SSH access. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and I'm going to hit done. And you'll have the option of installing different popular packages here. I'm just going to leave everything blank because like I said in the beginning of this video, this is meant to be kind of a generic Ubuntu installation that can work with any applications you want to put on it later. So I'm just going to leave all these unselected for now and I'll go down to done and hit enter. And after all the questions, you'll be brought to this screen here, which says that it's installing the system. Now, again, depending on the speed of your computer, this may take several minutes, so just be patient. Now, if at any point during the installation, you want to see some more information, you can go down here to view full log and hit enter. And this will show you exactly what it's doing at all times. I'm just going to go back down to close here, hit enter, and this kind of gives you the default summary. All right, and once the installation is complete, you should see this message at the top here, and you should see the option to reboot now. I'm going to go ahead and go down to this option, and you want to remove your USB drive or remove the ISO image from your virtual machine before you hit enter on reboot now. Once you've done that, hit enter. And just give it a minute, but you should see the system booting up from the hard drive. And you know you're booted into the system once you get the login screen here. And you can see that we're on Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. So I'll go ahead and just log in with the user that I created in the installer. And you can see that we've got a fully functioning Ubuntu server system. So like I said, I'm going to be following this up with several other videos on different applications that you can use this for. So don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see those. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and comment.